The origin of tennis dates back to the 12th century, to a game that would later be known as the sport of kings. But at times it was the death of kings. Literally, kings died because of tennis. Real kings. The French have given us so much. The invention of aspirin, gonorrhea, and the culinary treat that is warm duck liver. Mmm. But few French inventions have done more for the fitness of the wealthy and privileged than tennis, the roots of which lie in the monasteries of 12th century France, with a game called jeu de pomme, or game of palms, which is basically just tennis with your hands. Rackets wouldn't come into play for another couple hundred years. And by the end of the 13th century, the game's popularity had reached the French monarchy, the original Game of Thrones. King Louis X, also known as Louis the Stubborn, was crowned King of France in 1314 at the age of 25. During his reign, King Louis abolished slavery and readmitted Jews into France, which is a lot of progress to make in a reign which lasted just under two years. What? Only two years? That's crazy. I'm not talking to you. King Louis spent his leisure time playing jeu de pomme, but he hated having to play outdoors. So he decided to build the first indoor court. Louis could now play whenever he wanted. King Louis played hard, really hard. And during a game in 1316, he did what kings do. He played to win. And with no Gatorade, what's a king to drink to recover? Water? No chance. This 26-year-old king of France finished the game and hit the wine. Cold wine and lots of it. It was the last thing he ever did. So either it was the strenuous activity mixed with cold wine that exacerbated a previously unknown lung infection, or he was poisoned. Regardless, King Louis X became the first tennis player known by name, as well as the first king to die of a tennis-related death. It wasn't the last, though. King James of Scotland, first of his name, spent the first 18 years of his reign as a prisoner of England. It was here that he learned to play jeu de pomme, because apparently prison in England came with tennis lessons. Upon his release in 1434, he took his love of the game with him to his home in Perth. But there was a problem. The balls kept going into a nearby drain and were lost through the sewer. So King James demanded the sewers be sealed. Problem solved. At least for a few days, it turns out some Scottish nobles had a real distaste for the English influences King James brought with him to Scotland. So in typical medieval fashion, they sent assassins to his home. King James, thinking he was being a sneaky bastard, fled into the sewer system. Yep, the same sewer he had just sealed up. Once he reached the end, he realized he was trapped like a rat. And there he died, presumably among the tennis balls he tried so hard to save. Wait a second. Does that one really count? He didn't really die from tennis. Our final royal fatality comes in 1498. King Charles VIII decided to take his queen, Anne, to her first tennis match. They were late and in a hurry, and as they approached the court, King Charles bumped his head. They continued to the game, and King Charles even spent time talking with other spectators. Until mid-sentence, he fell backward. The king was dead from a brain hemorrhage. And so ends our tale of kings, assassins, death, and tennis. The introduction of rackets in the 16th, 16th century led to what is known as real tennis, similar to the modern game, but not quite the same. And in, in 1830, the lawnmower was invented. It was. Which many see as a catalyst to our modern game of lawn tennis, or simply t tennis. I think it's going to win the tennis match today. I think it's going to win this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do carrots and peas. Jesus. <laughs>
Yeah. Watermelon, watermelon. Yeah. Watermelon, watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Brain aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a little too much. <laughs>